and welcome to church. I'm glad to be in the presence of God and I believe you are also glad to be in the presence of God. But let's pray before we start the service. In Jesus' name, our Father and our God, we thank you for today's service. We ask you to take permanent control of today's service in the mighty name of Jesus. As we fellowship with you, be with us in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of the day, all glory will be ascribed unto you alone in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare the service open in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen and Amen. So let's put on our dancing shoes and go and dance for the Lord.
The time of Passover was drawing near, and Jesus and his disciples traveled toward Jerusalem with a crowd of fascinated people in tow. The people following Jesus had heard of or seen the many wonderful works he had done, and they were eager to see what he would do once he arrived in the great city of Jerusalem. On their journey, they came across two small towns near the Mount of Olives. As they approached, Jesus sent two of his disciples ahead on a special mission. Jesus told the two disciples, When you enter the next village, you will find a donkey's young colt there that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone stops you and asks what you are doing, tell them, It is needed for the Lord of all. The two disciples followed Jesus' instructions 
and made their way to the village. As the two men walked to the village, they discussed all that Jesus had told them, and before long, they arrived at the village. Immediately after entering the village, they came across a donkey and her colt, just as Jesus said they would. Continuing to follow Jesus' instructions, they began to untie the colt so that they could bring it back to Jesus. As the disciples worked to untie the colt, the owners approached them and said, What are you doing? The disciples replied, We need this donkey for the Lord of all. The owners allowed the disciples to take the colt, and they brought it back to Jesus. After returning, the disciples put their cloaks on the donkey's back and placed Jesus onto the animal. As Jesus rode the donkey, people ran out to meet him, placing palm leaves and spreading their cloaks out in front of him on the road. Jesus continued his journey, and as the road began to go down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began to praise God joyfully, in loud voices, for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the religious leaders had come out to watch the procession, and they grew angry over the outpouring of joy and praise at Jesus' arrival. They called out to Jesus, saying, Teacher, you must order your followers at once to stop saying these things. But Jesus responded, Listen to me. If my followers were silenced, the very stones would break out and praise me. As Jesus came near to Jerusalem, he saw the great city and began to weep. Jesus said to the inhabitants, If only you had known that today was the day your Messiah had come and that he came to bring peace. But you will not understand who I am and why I have come. Because of this, your enemies will overtake you and destroy this great city. The people of Jerusalem would only understand after his death that Jesus had come to save them from their sins.
Praise the Lord. Um, welcome to church. Our topic for today is unspeakable joy. And we are still talking about a grateful heart being the theme and also benefits of a grateful heart. One of those benefits is unspeakable joy. Before we go further, I want us to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. Thank you for another Sunday. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. We thank you for your love and care over our lives. We give you all the glory. Today, Lord, come and give us unspeakable joy. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our topic, as I said, is unspeakable joy as one of the benefits of a grateful heart. Our Bible text is from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2, from verse 1 to 10. Remember, this is lesson 30. Praise the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 2, from verse 1 to 10. The Lord has filled my heart with joy. I feel very strong in the Lord. I can laugh at my enemies. I am glad because you have helped me. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no God but you. There is no rock like our God. Don't continue bragging. Don't speak proud words. The Lord is a God who knows everything. He judges what people do. The bows and warriors break. The bows of warriors break, but weak people become strong. Those who once had plenty of food now must work for food. But people who once were hungry now grow food. A woman who was unable to have children now has, now has had seven. But a woman who had many sons now is sad. The Lord causes people to die and he causes them to live. He brings people down to where the dead are and he, rises, and he raises them to life again. The Lord makes people poor and he makes people rich. He makes people humble and he makes people great. The Lord raises the poor up from the dust and he picks the needy up from the ashes. He lets the poor sit with princes. He lets them sit on a throne of honor. The foundation of the earth belongs to the Lord. The Lord sets the world upon them. He protects his holy people, but those who do evil will be silenced in darkness. Their power will not help them win. The Lord destroys his enemies. He will thunder in heaven against them. The Lord will judge all the heads. He will give power to his king. He will make his appointed king strong. Praise the Lord. Our memory verse is taken from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 8. 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 8. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I'll take it again, our memory verse. Whom have not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Praise the Lord. I want us to recite the memory verse. What the memory verse is talking about is, we should have joy unspeakable as long as we believe in the Lord. 
and that joy unspeakable will speak for us in Jesus' name. So we'll take our memory verse once again. First Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Whom having, whom having not seen, ye love. In whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Praise the Lord. What is joy? What is joy? Joy is a full package and experience that comes with knowing the Holy Spirit. That is, when you know the Holy Spirit, you have joy. And then, what is unspeakable joy? This is the type of joy that is inexpressible, that is beyond description, that is incapable of expressing in word. And this indicates great joy. Joy is a word that brings laughter, great pleasure, delight, and euphoria. It is not based on happenings around us. Joy is not a function of our present experience or situations. It is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. In Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, in the later part, it says, Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. God's desire for us is to experience unspeakable joy continuously. Our case study for today is that of some shepherds that heard about Jesus in the book of Luke chapter 2 from verse 8 to 20. One night, I'm reading from the book of Luke chapter 2, from verse 8 to 20. One night, just like many others, over 2,000 years ago, in the city of David, called Bethlehem, some shepherds were watching their sheep. All of a sudden, an angel appeared with bright light, shining all around, and they were afraid. The angel told them not to be afraid because he brought them good news for all the people. That night, the Savior had already been born in Bethlehem. The proof of this, so they would be able to tell others, was that they would see the Savior of the world wrapped in stripes of clothes in a manger. Suddenly, a very large group of angels from heaven joined the first angel. All the angels were praising God, saying, Give glory to God in heaven, and on earth, let there be peace to the people who please God. The angels then went back to heaven, and the shepherds decided to go to Bethlehem to see what God had told them. The shepherds found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger, just like the angel had told them. They left and told everyone of the good news. Then the shepherd went back to their sheep, praising God and thanking him for everything that they had seen and heard. It was just as the angel had told them. The shepherds knew that what they had seen would change the whole world. Because God sent his son to be our savior and friend. They could not keep such joyful news to themselves. They had to tell others. Praise the Lord. Now, this experience that these shepherds had brought unspeakable joy to them. So in essence, there's a certain level of joy you have. That you cannot keep it to yourself. You just have to cheerfully, rejoicingly tell others. So this is the unspeakable joy we are talking about. Unspeakable joy can be expressed in true songs and hymns. Let's take a look at some cases where unspeakable joy was expressed. 
after the children of Israel, they were leaving their captives after many years. Moses, after crossing the Red Sea, they sang song to God. Why? Because the joy of crossing the Red Sea came upon them and he sang a song. Anna, after giving birth to Samuel, remember the story of Anna who prayed and prayed looking for a child and then she gave birth to Samuel. The joy that came after giving birth to Samuel, Anna sang a song. Mary, when she visited Elizabeth in the book of Luke, chapter 1, 46 to 56, Mary also sang a song. Unspeakable joy can be expressed through laughter and dance. If you remember the story of Sarah, and after Sarah gave birth to Isaac, she laughed. Praise the Lord. David, after he brought the ark of God to Jerusalem, he also danced. Praise the Lord. Unspeakable joy can be expressed through sharing gifts or by witnessing about Jesus Christ to others. A few of Purim, after the Jews defeated their enemies, they shared things. Why? Because they had a feast to share things. Why? Because they had joy after the defeat. Praise the Lord. And Andrew went about witnessing about Jesus. And he did so to his brother as well, Simon Peter, in the book of John chapter 1, uh, from verse 37 to 42. Praise the Lord. Effects of unspeakable joy. What does unspeakable joy do to you? One, it gives you great peace gives you great peace number two it makes you confident that god is on your side praise the lord number three it makes you confident that when you pray god will answer you number four on the effect of unspeakable joy makes you sure of your salvation and number five it makes you confident that there is no enmity between you and God. There are different dimensions of joy unspeakable. Different dimensions. Number one, joy unspeakable is a product of love. Two, it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. As we did have it said in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But a fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Number three, it is a product of an experience with the glory of God. Jude chapter 1 verse 24 says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. We are still talking about dimensions of unspeakable joy. Number four, it is a full experience of God's presence. In Psalms chapter 16, verse 11, it says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forever. Number five, joy is found in God. Number six, it is the essence of God. As written in the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 52. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Still talking about dimensions of unspeakable joy. Number seven, which I'll make the last. Joy is the full experience of the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit as written in the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 17. In conclusion, unspeakable joy is a joy of salvation. A life of holiness is the key to continue to experience this unspeakable joy. 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is as written in Romans chapter 10 verse 13. You can have this joy if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So if you would like to give your life to Christ, I want you to bow your head so that you can begin to experience unspeakable joy and say in your heart, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Let me experience unspeakable joy. Come and touch me. Take me as your son, as your daughter. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Praise the Lord. I hope you have learned some things about the unspeakable joy. So in order to show that, yes, you understand what we've talked about, I have a few questions for us. So I'll be right back. I want you to attempt the questions before we close the service. Praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. I hope you are able to attend to all the questions and you got it correctly. Let us take a closing prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you have taught us today. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. As your children, we are going into a new week. Please, Lord, come and go with us in Jesus' name. When we see again the joy that is unspeakable, that unspeakable joy will begin to manifest and dwell in our lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we are afraid. Amen. Before we share the grace, I want you to share this video, to like it, and also ensure to follow the Tabernacle of David Junior Church on all social media platforms. Let us share the grace. The grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall do well in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Bye. I'll see you next Sunday. Let's go.